fueling for performance means so much more than just the foods that we put on our plate. Um, and actually, your story that you shared, um, I, I believe it was last night or this morning, our body is our instrument and we have to fuel it. And that is such a huge part. But what really hit home for me, what I loved, was that you mentioned needing to fuel it with joy and gratitude. And yeah. I think that's something that I really want us to talk about now. Um, and, and I just want to hear from you about how you feel when it comes to what that means, what fueling for performance actually means. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like there is this fear that uh, dancers may have. And the fear um, is what, um, I guess, starts the, the negative cycle mm -hmm. of what food can become. Mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and that fear is like wanting to impress people wanting to please people, not wanting to um, look bad, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and that can go to the extreme um, that they don't take care of their own bodies that they don't see that they may be hurting themselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. So there's that balance of, you know, your body is an instrument, so you have to take care of it. You have to value yourself enough to not hurt yourself in order to please other people. Dancers as it is, they have a lot of pressure on them um, with dance in general being an aesthetic mm -hmm. type of art form and an aesthetic type of sport places a, a good amount of pressure around body type. And I feel that I, I'd love to hear from you about how you in your professional journey have been able to maintain a positive balance and a positive relationship with body type and despite having these pressures in the dance world. Yeah, so well, I want to start with um, when I was younger, I, I never really looked at my body in a bad way until I was maybe... Um, 16 years old, I would say, and I started training for the Jackson International Ballet Competition. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I had that fear that I was talking about of not pleasing people of not doing well of someone looking at me and saying, Oh, she has big thighs or because someone made that comment about dancers at my school, Oh, their thighs are overdeveloped. And it's those tiny little seeds that can create problems in younger dancers. So um, anyway, so I developed that fear. And, um, and because of that, I started becoming very perfectionistic. I was always a huge perfectionist anyway. Um, and I became very perfectionistic about what I was putting in my body to the point that I wasn't fueling myself enough. Mm -hmm. And um, so I kind of took that along with me. Um, I, I even developed mono actually through this competition because I was doing too many things and I wasn't eating enough. Totally. And, um, but I, I kind of brought that perfectionism about my body along with me to ABT when I joined studio company. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really until um, I got a contract with the main company that the company said, you know, you're looking too skinny and you need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I was kind of like, what? Like I was, I thought I was supposed to be skinny, you know? <laughs> right. So then they started getting on my case more and more and saying, you need to gain weight. You need to gain weight. But I didn't know how. And I had a fear uh, mm -hmm. again. I had a fear of gaining weight. So, um, they would they they did some things that didn't help me like they would weigh me randomly mm -hmm. when i wasn't expecting it and mm -hmm. um they sent me to some nutritionists and i wish i had known someone like you because it's it's kind of like a bright light you know it's a positive light on nutrition and these nutritionists that i went to um i just all i remember was that it was very dark like we go to very dark um you know office and anyway. <laughs> So basically, ABT, the way they handled my situation was a little bit, it, it brought me to an imbalance. It was kind of this downward spiral of how do I find this balance? You know, they want me to gain weight, but I don't want to gain weight, but I want to please them, but I want to please. So it was this spiral that I was lost completely. In. And then um, really the thing that helped me um, to make the story shorter is, um, I met my husband and um, he was a dancer in the company and we started going to visit his family in Spain. His mom is typical Spanish mom. 
you know, <laughs> she loves to cook. Amazing, amazing cook. And um, I, the first time I went, I spent a week there with them and she made every single meal that I ate. And I just saw all the work that she put into it and the heart and the soul behind it. And um, I came back after that week feeling like, wow, this now I know how to eat. Like, this is a meal. And mm -hmm. everything I put in my body was fresh ingredients. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I could do this. And so I developed this kind of similar love for cooking and for food and how it can be enjoyed, how it can bring families together. Yeah. And um, that is such a fabulous point. One thing that we see uh, that's so different between Europe and here is yeah. that is this emphasis on food being, again, more than just about being about health and body weight. Like in America, in the US, there's such a strong focus. And, and we do see this elsewhere too. I mean, diet culture uh, is pretty rampant in most pla uh, many places of the world now. But one thing that I think you're bringing up um, a difference is that in Europe, we see a lot of joy and um, a lot of emphasis on food yeah. playing such a large role in the culture and in our social. Yes. Whereas, yeah. whereas in the U.S., I think there's a very strong emphasis on food be placing a role on your body weight and on your health. And as perfectionists, I'm a fellow perfectionist type A as well. And I think what happens with us is that we are told or we believe something, you know, with Google out there, there's so much information about health and nutrition. And we're told like protein's good. Carbohydrates should be quote unquote clean. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, what do I do? And, and being, being this yeah. type of perfectionist, we're like, okay, well, I'm going to take this information and I'm going to run with it. And I'm going to be perfect about it and perfect about my food choices. And this is where we start to see um, a, a lot of what stems from a clean eating or even, even, uh, turning into what's called orthorexia, which I see sometimes with the younger dancers, wow. it it's very it has a negative impact on performance because it weighs so much on our mental and our emotional health because we don't we're yeah. not putting enough emphasis on the benefits of food as part of our social life and as part of our culture. I speak to dancers all the time about how. You know, if you feel that you can't eat out at events and you get anxious around food because, um, you know, you have to be in control 100% of your food choices, I think that we really start to see those extremes. And it's important to realize that, you know, fueling for your performance, you know, the, the protein, the carbs, the fat, that all plays a major role. And I definitely educate dancers about all of those important macronutrients and micronutrients, but we can't, we have to find balance. We have to find a balance of foods that we can eat and enjoy that might not necessarily be a hundred percent fueling our performance you know what I mean but it's, it's yeah us mentally and emotionally yeah well I think two of the things that you said especially that well three of the things that you said especially control um whether it's about yourself or about other people yeah. and also natural ingredients yeah Mm -hmm. is three three big things and one thing the first thing control is a huge thing for dancers because they're perfectionists because they want to be able to control everything and they're afraid to lose that control totally. and mm -hmm. the other thing is that you know when food becomes just about yourself when you know what you put in your body just revolves around you and your control and everything you know, when it when it becomes about that, then it becomes a problem because then you are micro focusing on yourself Absolutely. and every tiny little thing you put into your body rather than focusing on the people that you're with, the conversations that you're having, what you're learning and taking from that. Um, and so it's actually that I feel that dancers sometimes need to get a bigger perspective because we look in the mirror all the time. We're staring at ourselves all the time. Mm -hmm. And now we're all at home and all we have is, is what we're doing in ourselves. Yeah. So um, I think it's really important for us to try to look beyond ourselves, look at the people who support us, try to have more relationships with other people and let food be about the relationships that we have with other people and yeah. the gratitude that, that 
comes from not only just the food that we eat, but the people who prepare the food for us. I remember one time I was talking to this young dancer and trying to give her some advice because she was going through a difficult time with, and I just sympathize with her so much. And I just, I hate to see that. Choosing foods and, and realizing that you can build a plate that makes you feel good. Uh, um, again, physically, emotionally, yeah. and yeah. mentally. And dancers are different than the average person too. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, especially especially for dancers, because I get asked this question a lot. Um, I have a very non-restrictive approach to what I teach. And so a dancer will be like, well, you know, I have a sweet tooth. I want to enjoy, I don't know, these homemade cookies I made. Um, mm -hmm. But I have class at 4 p.m. Um, you know, what is the ideal pre-class snack that's going to energize me? Mm -hmm. and might not necessarily be the cookie at that time because we need to think about what's going to make you feel energized and fueled throughout your throughout your class so it's yeah not, it's not about not eating the cookie or restricting the cookie forever it's not about this all or nothing mindset it's about knowing how to fuel and when throughout the day so that you can go about you know dancers are intermittently throughout their day and you know this from classes rehearsals and performances you're intermittently having to exercise you know you yeah. that the whole day is based around that so i think food plays such an essential role in make, making sure that you're energized yeah. in classes and also the thing is is like athletes for instance have all these people doing that for them but dancers mm -hmm. don't have that like ballet That's companies true. don't have someone saying okay you are going to be working from 10 until 5 30 and then you have a performance from seven until like 11 o'clock at night you know mm -hmm. no one's gonna say this is how you have to fuel yourself to get through that day on a consistent basis absolutely and um i think that's the sad part of it is and and the amazing thing that you're here that you're trying to get the word out and and educate young dancers because somebody has to do that and it's um, and I think companies should kind of team up with people like you to help dancers to understand that. Cause I never, I still don't completely understand like what would be the best setup of how to get through a long day like that and find when you don't have time to eat too. Finding convenience because especially maybe not right now while we're at home and we have a little bit more time in our hands, but when you get back into the studio and you are balanced your rehearsals and your performance and your classes and your cross training mm -hmm. throughout the day that's a lot of going from point a to point b to point c where you know sitting down to eat may not always be this full-blown experience that you can have you know yeah. so, so finding convenient options is so important yeah. which kind of brings me into the next couple questions i have that are a little mm -hmm. bit more fun that i know dancers out there would love to hear about yeah can you give us a sample day? And, and there's no right or wrong answer to this, but can yeah. you give us a sample day of you, if you want to talk about a day now while you're home, or if you want to talk about a day when, you know, if we were to be having the Met season right now, yeah. um, how you would be going about fueling, balancing, going through point A to point B to point C while also fueling your body? Yeah. Um, well, of course, as I said, it's difficult because we're dancers and you want to eat something that you feel like doesn't bother your stomach when you have to put a tutu on, right? You know, run a whole ballet, you know? Yeah. Um, and also the nerves of performing um, is another aspect of it. But um, yeah, well, I think um, the things that my normal routine, all right, and I don't know if this is right or not, but years have gone on. This is what has, you know, the, um, uh, my my norm I guess so I guess I um I wake up and I have like toast with peanut butter because I know that's an easy way to get protein yeah maybe I'll have like a banana or some scrambled eggs as well and then uh and one thing I've been doing lately which I really love is uh before I eat anything I drink a glass of water with lemon in it because I get some vitamin c and hydrate but on a normal day then I would run to work through the subways, um, get there, take class. After class, I usually feel like I need a little snack, something like nuts or, um, you know, I may not be the biggest um, fruit fan. I love vegetables and I love <laughs> sour vinegary stuff. But during the day while I'm working, it's hard to eat a lot of veggies. They kind of blow up in your stomach. During the day, I opt 
for like chicken or tuna salad, condensed options that are going to help us feel full for longer. So it'll help you get through your actual full class or your full rehearsal. Um, and I love that you're also saying like in the morning, you're pairing it with some toast and, and a banana. Those mm -hmm. carbohydrates are definitely also giving you some fuel. So I love that. Yeah. And then um, before a show, I'll try to eat carbs. Um, I found that um, pasta is really easy. It gives me energy and it's easy to digest before mm -hmm. the show. Um, also pairing that with some protein kind of thing. Yeah. And then yeah. after shows, I try to like cram my veggies because I love them. So um, mm -hmm. that with some extra protein and carbs. So I do try to keep everything balanced, but I have more heavy doses of veggies after the shows. Um, so I'm actually very curious about this and I've always been curious about this because like when I, when I go see a performance at the Met, um, m many shows will not end until late in the evening, like you said, where yeah. even if it's at 10.30, I, I imagine you are not getting home before 11, the latest. Um, yeah. do, you, do you have any post-performance rituals or meal? Is that when you tend to have your dinner that late at night or do you have a Yeah, it's a very kind of strange, it's a strange <laughs> schedule, um, especially during the Met season. We end up eating our lunch at like five something. Right, you know? right. Um, mm -hmm. so before that, during the rehearsal day, we snack a little bit, mm -hmm. but, or I'll have my lunch at like three something, and then I'll have a little snack before the show to give me energy. And then I'll eat my big dinner after the show, but I really have to eat a good meal after the show. And I think that's very important. Otherwise it's hard to sleep, especially with all the adrenaline and ah, yeah, I don't know. You know, I think it's so great that you're saying this because one question that I seem to be getting most often right now uh, mm -hmm. is about intermittent fasting. And I can't emphasize this enough that intermittent fasting, I often explain it as just not being practical for a dancer. Whether it's right or wrong, I'm not getting into right now. But practicality, it, it doesn't really, uh, I don't think it's really possible because again, a time like now or what would be now with the Met, there's yeah. no way that you can, you know, in that. think about stopping eating at a certain time and not eating for like this 16 hour fast. There's no way that you'd be able to. No, in a, no because we're like fast. super high level athletes, super high level athletes. And that we need to understand that that's what we are and to take care of ourselves and our bodies as such. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so one, another question that I've always thought about is what about mid performance? So what comes to mind is this performance yeah. that is not only longer, but also so physically demanding on the body. Do you ever feel that you need a mid performance despite your nerves? Yeah. I mean, you definitely feel if you're doing a full length ballet, you feel nauseous. And the last thing that you want to do is eat during an intermission. You know, when you feel like you've got run over by a truck and you still have like two more full acts to do, you know, but um, yeah, I did. I used to try to go through a whole show without eating. And then I started realizing as I started doing more full length ballets that it helped me so much. I had so much more energy towards the end yeah. of the ballet if I ate something and not a lot, just like even just half a banana, you know, yeah. or a couple bites of a banana, yeah. something with natural sugar mm -hmm. um, and maybe even a little potassium. Um, so really important point there is, you know, mid performance, what would help is something that's quickly and easily digestible by the body. So fruit, especially banana, and yes, because of the potassium that it's gonna provide for your electrolytes, um, but just that having that piece of fruit as just mm -hmm. a quick energy that's not gonna sit in your stomach, that's not gonna be too high in fiber, uh, that'll you know make you feel bloated towards the end of your yeah. workout, I think is such a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's very necessary, especially if you're doing that, that difficult stuff. And I, I tend to get really cranky if I just don't eat. <laughs> so I, I do think it's important as dancers, just we have to keep smaller meals or snack through the day until you can. And that doesn't mean you need to take meals out completely if you're going to snack. I mean, have healthy, small snacks and then eat a decent meal you know it, it's so important satisfaction so just to review the macronutrients being protein carbs and fat 
all hold an important responsibility for the body. Um, but satisfaction being the fourth macronutrient, because if you're not choosing foods that are actually satisfying you, and if you're not ever having yeah. that experience where you're sitting down for a meal, you know, hopefully screens are shut and you can actually tune into your meal and mindfully eat, that's going to help bring on that satisfaction so that you're mm-hmm. not in the kitchen, just noshing throughout the night, trying to fill this void. And I think that's, that's what a huge thing is mindfully eating, you know, and I think it's something that we can find because I think that cooking and food can be an art as well. Yes, I love that. And Mm -hmm. to find that for yourself is so important. Even if you say, okay, well, I'm not a good cook. I don't like cooking. I don't know how to cook. Mm -hmm. Find ways to satisfy yourself. Don't just eat things that you don't like Mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. Find, I don't know, restaurant when they're when restaurants are open or go to a a Whole Foods and get some um, good meals that are pre-made that you feel like I love this Mm -hmm. yeah that's such a good point it's important to realize you know you have foods that are convenient that are going to fuel you for those busy afternoons and busy days but try when you can to also have those true experiences with food so whether that means you are getting in the kitchen and cooking or maybe that means you're getting a pre-made meal. But the point is, is that you're sitting and you're actually making food an experience. So there will be times when food can't be such an experience. But there's also, exactly. there should be some times that you are making food an experience just to help you build that more positive balance and relationship with what food is doing for your performance. Yeah, and I, I think the thing going back to Europe, um, I just, I see that families sit down together so yeah. much more often. And I feel like that should be a tradition that we should uh, value more. Yeah. Definitely. Because when, and kids have devices all the time and food should bring people together, should bring families together, should force communication. I have that honestly with my own family. Um, yeah. We have a three and a half year old at home. And, you know, sometimes just as a working mom, sometimes yeah. we have to rely on screen time just to get some things done. It's like, I want us sitting there and I want us, uh, you know, whatever on each other. we can have focusing on each other during that time. And I think that's so important. Like what you mentioned before, when it comes to mindful eating, now's the time while we have the time during COVID, to practice those behaviors, practice mindful eating behaviors, yeah. you're cooking without the screens, and you're actually um, becoming, not to sound cheesy, but becoming like more in tune with your food choices. Yeah, and being grateful for your food, and not just being grateful for your food, being grateful for the people who are sitting around the table eating with you. Um, if you're lucky during this time, of course, to not be Uh, to have people around you. Some people are doing this by themselves, which is difficult. But anyway, um, yeah, and I, for myself, the thing that I loved about my mother-in-law, for instance, is that she has made cooking an art. And um, I feel like because of that, it has brought her family together. And um, I, for me, I I thought I want to be that kind of person one day. If I have a family, I want them to want to sit down, to be excited, to sit around the table, to eat what I cook. So I want to learn to cook because of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Not even just because I'm a dancer, because I, I value family first. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then secondly, I value my, my body just because I want to be a support to other people. And if I can't take care of myself, then I can't take care of other people. Yeah, I think I think that's such a wonderful point. Sarah, thank you so much. This has been incredible, honestly, just hearing what your outlook is and, and how balanced your overall outlook and relationship is on food and on your body. So I can't thank you enough. Uh, for coming and joining us today. <laughs> no, I I, I want to thank you as well. And, and I will definitely refer anyone to you. And yeah, you. even Thanks. refer myself to you if I have any questions. <laughs> but it's so wonderful um, to have someone like you out there that understands dancers and also understands nutrition because yeah. mm-hmm. there are two very, very, uh, there are two things that are need each other. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. There are like two puzzle pieces that come yeah. together. And um, so. it's very you know it's where dancers are athletes uh, but they're also artists and they're balancing a 
a ton when it comes to just busy days and um, the mentalities. And like I said before, the pressures around body aesthetics. So for everyone out there, if you do want to just check out some free resources, just head over to dancenutrition.com because I put a ton up there pretty much every week. Um, Sarah, thank you so much. I, I can't yeah. thank you. <laughs> just please never hesitate to reach out to me. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. And last thing I want to say is that, you know, people say, oh, dancers don't eat, but they do eat and they need to eat. So all of you dancers out there, like it's, you can be a normal person and still be a dancer. So you heard it here. You heard it here. <laughs> thank you so much. Nice to meet you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.